Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna today we're going to continue the discussion of our liver In this video i will talk about the blood supply and the venous drainage of the liver apart from that we will also talk about a pinnacles of the liver for all those who haven't subscribed i make an at me a piece of cake so you should definitely go ahead and click on that subscribe button the liver's blood supply is derived from this porta hepatis area uh, we all know that the lesser omentum's free right margin, which is getting uh, inserted on the margin of the porta hepatis. So it brings with it the portal vein and most posterior part, then the hepatic artery and the hepatic ducts, right? What they do is provide uh, arterial supply to the liver and the inferior vena cava, which was lying in the groove for the inferior vena cava is going to be uh, where the venous blood will drain. So in this case, it's very uh, surprising that in the case of liver, your arterial supply is actually derived 80% from the portal vein not from the artery only and 20 percent is derived from the hepatic arteries so what happens exactly uh, is that portal vein and the hepatic artery uh, before they enter the liver they are going to divide into two branches all right a right and a left a right and a left all right so these two will divide into first first degree branches these are the primary branches these are known as the right and the left branches all right so this is the portal vein plus the hepatic artery all right these are the primary branches i want you to remember this primary word all right then what happens is these right and left branches are going to supply the right and the left functional lobe of the liver with the blood supply uh, these further divide into two degree or secondary branches. Uh, these right and left branches will divide into the segmental vessels. All right. Then come the tertiary branches, the three degree branches. These are the interlobular vessels. All right. And then the interlobular vessels, what these do is they form further ramifications and they become the hepatic sinusoids. Sinusoids are empty spaces. So within the liver, they form many, 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 many empty spaces where the portal vein and the hepatic arteries blood will be mixed. Both oxygenated and deoxygenated is mixed in these hepatic sinusoids. And what happens is what is the venous drainage? The venous drainage is done through interlobular veins. These hepatic sinusoids will drain into the interlobular veins. These will unite all of the interlobular veins into the sublobular veins. Finally, they unite to form the hepatic veins. Now, the hepatic veins will drain your entire blood where? We all know there was the inferior vena cava lying on the posterior part. So, in the floor of the inferior vena cava, these hepatic veins will pierce the floor and emerge and directly drain into the inferior vena cava. All right, so moving on, the nerve supply of the liver is basically, obviously, since it's a visceral, it's derived from the sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. The parasympathetic are coming from the vagus. Now, let's discuss a couple of important clinicals related to the liver. What happens is whenever you want to palpate the liver in a patient, you will palpate the area or the region, the right hypochondrium. This is the right costal margin, let's suppose. And we know that the liver is almost lying over here. The inferior border of the liver is right over here. So what we do is play, we place a hand right here and we ask the patient to breathe and we deeply palpate and apply pressure to be able to feel this inferior border. At times what happens is the liver undergoes enlargement of size and it can enlarge to as far as your right lower quadrant. That's why whenever we begin to palpate the liver, we begin from the right iliac fossa region and then we go up, we go up and then we'll finally feel the inferior border of the liver. So what are the causes of a hepatomegaly or the enlargement of the liver? There are many causes. Among them, you can be this congestive heart failure. The uh, pathogenesis of why they cause the liver enlargement uh, is something you'll study later in pathology. It can enlarge because of any bacterial disease, any viral disease. Viral disease includes your hepatitis, very common disease. And it can also enlarge due to a cancer, either liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, which is most commonly metastatic cancer. It means the cancer was somewhere else and it metastasized to the liver. That is the most common way of cancer of liver. So what do you do when there is metastatic tumor? this is a capability of the liver that not many organs have is that if you even take out 80 percent of the liver if you remove 80 percent of the liver the liver will regenerate within the next six to twelve months another pathology of the liver is the cirrhosis now what happens is cirrhosis of the liver is when 
um your liver is becoming compromised and cirrhosis is a very dangerous condition because in the cirrhosis your hepatocytes which are the functional cells of the liver they undergo destruction and they are replaced by fat or fibrosis all right and th there is no point of these cells because they're not doing the function of the liver function of the liver starts deteriorating which is very dangerous and can actually lead to death so the most common cause of cirrhosis is alcoholism all right alcoholism is the major cause why the liver undergoes degeneration or shrinking which happens in cirrhosis or fibrosis so what happens is due to the cirrhosis your portal vein it starts uh, getting blocked that means the blood from the portal vein is not entering the inferior vena cava it's not entering your systemic system therefore the body starts moving the blood we've already talked about this important clinical you should uh, go ahead and check that video out on my channel the blood starts redirecting and going or uh, using different routes to get to the uh, inferior vena cava and to the heart right that causes various symptoms like caput medusae that we've discussed before and other esophageal varices etc what we can do in this case is uh, a surgery called the portosystemic shunts can be made to counteract with this problem uh, another important clinical is an aberrant hepatic artery so we all know hepatic artery is a branch of the common hepatic artery coming from the celiac trunk sometimes the right hepatic artery which is normally a branch of that proper hepatic artery it comes it becomes aberrant which means it is basically replaced and it comes instead from the superior mesenteric artery and at times the left hepatic artery comes from the left gastric artery at that time you will term it the aberrant hepatic artery all right another important clinical is that if you want to carry out a liver biopsy to check out what's wrong with the tissue of the liver we carry it out in the 10th intercostal space in the mid axillary line that is where we will pass the needle in the patient this is according to the klm so that was all uh, for the blood supply and some clinicals of the liver do not forget to subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching